Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range with a product that's new to me. It's a Gym Tech bolt carrier for the AR-15. It's available in both 5.56 and 308. And what it's designed to do is to protect your rifle from an overgas situation, which happens when you suppress the rifle. Now I talk about overgas when you fire a 5.56 or a 308 cartridge, as the bullet passes down the bore, some of the gas is tapped off in a direct gas impingement rifle. It comes back into the bolt carrier. There's a little expansion chamber right here where the vent holes are, and the gas expands, pushes the bolt away from the carrier, and the whole carrier group springs rearward and cycles, then goes back home, stripping a fresh round from the magazine and readying the gun for the next shot. Now, when you attach a suppressor to the end of the gun, what you do is increase that gas pressure in the barrel and that increased gas pressure gets transferred via the direct, direct gas impingement tube to the carrier, and when that happens, the carrier velocity goes up considerably. So if this were a full auto rifle with a suppressor on the end, it may go from 800 rounds a minute to 1,000 or 1,100 rounds a minute because the bolt carrier, the velocity has been increased because of the overgas situation on the rifle. Now what Gym Tech has done has put a valving system in the bolt carrier itself. So the carrier works with your existing bolt, firing pin, a cam pin, and firing pin retaining pin. All you'll get in the box is just the bolt carrier. These bolt carriers go for around $279 or so. So there's a little valve on one side. It's on the back side of the carrier. We'll show you what that looks like that you're going to set to either suppressed or unsuppressed. When you have it in the suppressed setting, what it's doing is limiting the flow of gas into the carrier. So when it does start to cycle, the carrier velocity is regulated back to what it would be from the factory without a suppressor on the end of the barrel, increasing the pressure in the gas system and in the barrel itself. So what does it do? It protects the rifle from undue abuse. When you increase the bolt carrier velocity, the spring in here and the buffer aren't able to compensate for it, so the bolt carrier slams to an abrupt stop before it goes back home. And also, the gas, the overgas that um, comes in normally would be vented through the two holes on the side of the carrier, and that increases the gas around the shooter. So in theory, with this system in place, you get the bolt carrier velocity back down to its normal velocity, and you reduce the amount of gas that's in the shooter's face. So that's what we're going to try out this afternoon. This is the first range trip I've had with the new Gym Tech carrier. I've not shot it yet, so I'm bringing you guys along. The suppressor we have here on the end, this is called a Doomsday Suppressor. It's from Silencer Inc. It's a new product and a new company. They're based here in Indiana. It's in a very affordable can and it's a multi-part can. The baffles that you see here are welded together so there's no outer shell. And the part right here that attaches to the barrel and it's a direct thread only can, this is the serialized part. So if you were to get a baffle strike, you could replace just the baffle stack and not have to write off the whole can because of, you know, that baffle strike. This rifle that we're gonna be shooting this afternoon is a Midwest Industries. It's a Model 15F and on top of that, I have a true dot from Meprolite. This is very similar to the military M5 sight that the Israelis use, and it is Israeli made, and this is being sold by Optics Planet for $399. So that's the rifle setup we have this afternoon. We're gonna be shooting some ZQI M855 ball through the suppressor, and let's just see how this Gym Tech carrier works. So here's the Gym Tech bolt carrier. Now it looks like an M16 carrier because it has the shelf back here, so it will work in your full auto firearms, which is nice. The valving system, is on the back side of the carrier. So while it's in the gun, you're not gonna make adjustments to the carrier, which is kind of a downside to it, right? Because it'd be nice if you could make those adjustments on the other side. Also, this valve moves very freely, at least while it's new and not caked in carbon. And the only thing that keeps it in, the, in its selected position is the rails inside of the receiver itself. So it's very easy to flip this back and forth when it's out, but when it's in the gun, it can't be moved. So that's probably one of the reasons why they put it on the backside. It wouldn't be able to move anyway uh, based on this design if it were accessible through the ejection port. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. It just drops in using your existing other uh, bolt carrier parts like I mentioned earlier. And it's ready to go. The silencer ink can is direct thread as I had mentioned. I'm gonna go ahead and thread that on. It's a half by 28 right hand thread. And I am always struggling to hit those threads. This little Midwest Industries rifle is an extremely lightweight rifle, and this can is surprisingly lightweight as well because it doesn't have that outer sleeve. Also, it should fit comfortably inside a rail system that's at least, say, 1.4 inches uh, in diameter. 
uh, it's, I believe this can itself is like a 1.3 inch diameter or something like that. So uh, there are certain rails on the market that are up to 1.5 inches diameter on the inside. So if you want to recess it a bit, you can set it back. But keep in mind these welds here do pop out. So if you want to try to set the whole thing inside of a, a rail, it's going to be kind of difficult because of those welds, but you can set it at least partially inside of a rail. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my sight's on. It is. We have some ZQI M855 ball we're going to put in the gun. And we're going to shoot without ears just to see if we can get a feel for how this sounds. Now, we do have the carrier set to the suppressed setting. We'll try uh, messing around with that too here in a few minutes. We'll leave it in the suppressed setting, take the can off, and see if the gun cycles, um, and just kind of mess with it and see how it works. So let's fire the first couple of rounds. We'll make sure everything's tight. And here we go. All right, so watch the spent casings coming out of the gun. You'll notice that they're just kind of coming out at a standard velocity. The recoil feels just like an unsuppressed AR-15. And I will say, I can hear the definite sonic boom of the bullet breaking the sound barrier down range. But back here at the shooter's ear, it's, uh, it's, it sounds pretty darn good. So what we're going to do now is do a quick test, fire 30 rounds quickly to see what the gas around the shooter's face is like, see if that's reduced in any way. Typically when you're shooting a suppressed rifle, the gas around the shooter's face is increased, especially with AR-15s. Cause your eyes to burn a little bit, water, nose to burn a little bit. Uh, the other thing we're going to look for is the carrier velocity. As the velocity increases on the carrier, the spent casings start to move forward. Okay, so when a rifle like the AR-15 is unsuppressed, you can typically find it ejecting pretty much straight out the side of the rifle, what we call the 3 o'clock position, or maybe a little bit to the rear towards the 4 o'clock position. As that velocity increases, you'll see that ejection pattern move forward towards the front of the rifle. All right, here we go. Now, we do have a slight breeze coming this way, a nice breeze in the face. So uh, in, in situations like that, it's not uncommon for the gas cloud to quickly move away from the shooter's face and not cause your eyes to water as much. Here we go, 30 rounds. All right, now, I don't know if it's a function of the wind or what, but even that time, I didn't even feel that much gas in my nose, and my eyes aren't watering whatsoever. So, uh, and then we'll take a look at the tape and see what the ejection pattern on the rifle was looking like. I really couldn't see because of the glasses I had on. I was focused on the target downrange. But overall, I would say that the gun definitely feels like it's recoiling normal. It doesn't feel like, to me, that the carrier has really increased in velocity at all. I've taken an Ares Armor standard bolt carrier group it doesn't have a suppressor setting. It's nickel boron. We've thrown it in the Midwest Industries rifle. What we're going to do is shoot it quickly, 30 rounds, just like we did with the Gemtech bolt carrier. And we're going to see what the ejection pattern looks like and also see what the gas around the shooter's face looks like. We have about the same wind coming out of this direction towards me as we did on the last test. So also you should note that as it starts to run out of ammunition in the magazine, the bolt carrier velocity starts to increase slightly because the pressure on the bottom of the bolt carrier is reduced as the magazine runs dry. So when you watch a machine gun fire, It'll start off ejecting over here and it'll slowly move forward uh, as the magazine runs dry because the bolt's speeding up a little bit. All right, here we go, 30 rounds with the standard bolt carrier. Let's see what it does. All right, so I got a little bit more gas in the nose, not so much in the eyes. Uh, my eyes are starting to water just a little bit. I'd say the gas is very similar. Uh, the Gym Tech reduces it maybe a little bit but nothing drastic. It seemed like the wind still carrying that gas out of my face. Well, I will say I felt it in my nose just a little bit more. We'll have to go back and look at the tape and see what the ejection pattern of the rifle looked like, see if it was more towards the two or one o'clock position. But I could also definitely feel though that that carrier was coming to a more abrupt stop in my shoulder. I can tell that it had a can on it with the Gym Tech um, bolt carrier in here. I can't really feel it as much. It feels more normal. This feels like the carrier is just a little bit accelerated. Let's take a look at the tape and see what it looks like. In the last scene, where we just tested the carrier velocity with the suppressor on it using a standard carrier, 
we definitely saw that the spent casings were going more towards the one o'clock position, which would indicate that the carrier was definitely moving faster than the Gemtech carrier on its suppressed setting. I've put the Gemtech carrier back in the gun. It's still on the suppressed setting, but I've taken the suppressor off the end of the rifle. This is just more or less my curiosity. I wanna see if the gun's still getting enough gas without the suppressor in place on the suppressed setting to cycle the rifle. Let's we'll see what happens. So I could feel like one of those empty kicks. I could feel that the bolt carrier velocity was reduced. Yeah, it's not, it, it's gonna go click, but no bang. All right, so definitely we can tell from that simple test that the carrier is definitely regulating the amount of gas coming out of the tube into the carrier. So we know for sure now. So now let's take the Gemtech carrier out of the rifle and turn it to the unsuppressed setting and make sure the rifle functions as it should. All right, to do that, all I have to do is switch this lever from this side to that side. Okay, that should be unsuppressed. Put it back in the rifle. Seal it up, grab my ears, can't forget that. I've rung my ears more than once. And grab the magazine, let's head over to the range really quick. All right, here we go. No, uh, no suppressor on the end of the rifle and the carrier is set to the unsuppressed position. So, the carrier works as designed. I think I like it. I want to get one for my 308. The 556s we've been able to find. So far, I haven't been able to find the 308 carrier. But, um, yep, it works. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out to the range for our first range session with the Gym Tech 556 suppressor carrier. I will say that I'm sufficiently impressed with the carrier. I'm going to leave it in this rifle and shoot it quite a bit more. Uh, it seems to do everything that it was advertised to do. They're again about $279. Uh, we did pick a, a few of them up at Copper Custom just to test them out. Uh, we will probably sell them as we continue our testing and evaluation. Again, I do want to get my hands on a 308 uh, version of it to see how it works, but uh, we'll probably wind up carrying those as there seems to be a very solid upgrade to your suppressed AR-15 rifles, both 5.56 and 308. So stick around, you'll see it in use again here in the channel. If you guys would like to support the Military Arms Channel, you can do that by swinging by Copper Custom and picking up a Mac patch. You typically see me wear those on my hat. They're only $3.99, they really do help out. And if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms creators, taken them under one roof, that is Full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon. Oh, and the reason I'm shooting over the water is because it really upsets the safety sallies. Time to go home.